Good afternoon, everyone. How's everyone doing? Doing. <laughs> doing, I know it's Thursday, last day. Everyone is a little bit tired at this point. Why? This is number three. So how many of you all are boudoir photographers out in the audience? All right, so we got a little bit of a mix. As you all know, we struggle with marketing on social media because of just the genre that we are in. We have a, an image base that, unfortunately, Mark Zuckerberg does not like. Um, there is the overwhelming, purveying thing that Mark Zuckerberg does not like nipples. And he owns the two largest social media platforms that we try to market on. So what I want to talk to you about over the next 20 minutes is basically not down and deep how you're going to avoid everything, but what's worked for me over the course of my nine years in shooting boudoir and managing to mostly stay off the radar as far as being banned and all of that. The biggest thing that you have to worry about right now, especially in the pandemic, is the fact that it's your earpiece falling off is that it's not live people that are actually viewing your images and deciding whether or not that it should be pulled. It's AI bots and they're looking at very specific things and the biggest one always is do they see nipple or the perception of nipple. So you want to make sure that whatever you're doing that we're not continuing to propagate boudoir is a dirty word. Facebook jail. All of us who are in the boudoir industry are very familiar with this. Um, you can get anywhere from a one hour ban up to losing your entire account. The thing about this that is really strange to me as a photographer that's a business person trying to make a living doing boudoir is that this sort of became a badge of honor um, over the past several years where it was like, ooh, I got a 30 day ban or I got a seven day ban. Why is this important to you? You're running a business, and if you're now being taken off of a free marketing platform, you're hurting your own business. You don't want to sit there and be like, yeah, I got a 30-day ban and a badge about that and posting about that on social media. No, you want to post about your latest images or what you're doing in your business to market to get new clients, because guess what? Your client doesn't care about that badge that you've got a ban or that you're out. They're not seeing you for that entirety of that time. You're hurting your business, you're hurting your brand. Like I said, it became more important to push the limits than being visible for your own business. This grew out of a lot of Facebook groups where everyone's touting this to fellow photographers. They're not the ones that are buying your services. They're not the ones that are paying your bills. They're not the ones that are booking your sessions. So why are you more proud to them than you are to your own potential clients out there? Stop doing it. Go with the safe image. Boudoir has become that sort of dirty word. If you've paid attention on Instagram especially for several years, it's come back now, Boudoir was actually a banned hashtag. And any Boudoir related, if you put Boudoir, I'm from Boston, you'd end up getting traffic, dumping out on you, and eventually the dreaded shadow ban, which they refuse to acknowledge actually exists. I know for a fact that I was banned because I was averaging four or 500 likes on an image a day. Then all of a sudden one day, boom, my engagement dropped down to maybe 10 to 15 likes. And it wasn't like all of a sudden people stopped following me. So whether they want to admit it or not, they are doing stuff behind the scenes in order to ban and limit based upon what it is you're putting out there. And a lot of it is your hashtag research. So if you're using the hashtag boudoir, hashtag boudoir photos, hashtag boudoir inspiration. Do your research every couple of weeks to make sure that that's still a live hashtag. I've come across where, like I posted it for a couple of weeks and then all of a sudden I go in and try and check to see what's going on and if it's still a live hashtag and all of a sudden it's dumped and there's no longer anything going on. It's as simple as just searching it and seeing if there's any live images on Instagram that are showing what your hashtag you're searching for. Also, do not constantly just copy and paste your hashtags over. Even if it's still a live hashtag, they will ban you for that because they're seeing it and all you're doing is now hurting that hashtag in and of yourself so that you're not going to be using it to market that much more. 
like I said, I've been in business for nine years shooting boudoir. I've had one band for 24 hours, and there's a reason why. My business is more important to me than breaking the rules. I will always choose the safe image versus, yes, it may be a wow image, but it's pushing the limits. I don't ever want to have my account locked down and not be able to market to my potential clientele. When it comes to big promotions, whether it be Black Friday or any other things that you're doing, you want to be extra cautious as you're leading up to that. Before I was coming to WPPI, I made sure that I did not do anything that would be considered controversial by the AI bots because I didn't want to not be able to post while I was here and be locked down because it's going to hurt my business. And I'm about making money from my clientele, increasing the visibility that I have, and it doesn't have to be because I use that image that may be my best, but it's got nudity in it, or it pushes one of the community standards. The other thing when it comes to community standards is you don't want to just say, oh, I know what they are on Facebook. At least once a month, go in and double check. Uh, while I was prepping for this, I went in and they just had a late, uh, their latest update was as of this month. They had updated it again previously in November. So it's constantly changing and evolving and the wording that they use can change slightly and all of a sudden an image that was okay a month ago is now gonna get dinged this month. So constantly be going in, just the easiest way to do it, type in on the Facebook search bar, community standards, click in and it'll show you and you can actually go back and see the previous uh, community standards and what changed because they'll hash out what the previous wording was so you can see where they've changed little things. It's all incredibly unfair the way that they word it um, and it's very vague. Um, they've taken away the imagery that used to be tied to it as examples because I think it was just horrible and incredibly biased um, towards the female body versus what you can get away with showing a male body. So always stay current with what is going on as far as your Facebook standards. And it's a simple two second search just by typing it into the search bar. There's a lot of strategies out there that you can exist and thrive within the Facebook, Instagram communities. I don't so much get into TikTok and all of that because I'm still trying to figure TikTok out. <laughs> like most of us are. Um, but ultimately, it's not personal, it's just business, like Michael Corleone said. Don't get upset about the fact that you can't put your image that you think may be your best out there. Put the safer image out. You can show in your private website or just in your portfolio those images. Facebook, Instagram, any of the social media platforms, they're free marketing tools. We have to play by their rules, unfortunately. So their rules dictate that we have to have safer images. Excuse me? That would be a safe image. That was actually the uh, header on my Facebook page for a while um, because that she is fully clothed as far as what they consider um, nudity and whatnot. She doesn't have bare buttocks or anything like that, which is what the bots will focus in on. Um, everything else within her follows fine. She's not showing anything frontal. Um, so that is considered a safe image. I don't have to do that for the most part because I've posted safe images. I'm not ever really close to that borderline. I skew so far off of it that I don't want that. There's been times where I'm like, I don't know in my own work if that's a nipple or a shadow. I will not put that image just because of the fact that I'm worried about it and I am hypersensitive to it because like I said, I wanna be able to talk to my clientele constantly and not ever have that. When I got my 24 hour ban, I'm sitting there, I'm like, what do I do? And it's miserable. I can't imagine having one of the three, seven, 30 day bans because I'm also one of those people, I don't have a backup account. Um, Facebook locked down on all of that when everyone was making those and I play the game by the rules so that I don't have to have a backup account. Um, it's one of those ones where if you're questioning it, don't post it. There's safety in numbers. So how many of you that are boudoir photographers have private Facebook groups for your VIPs or your clientele? All right, those of you who don't, 
you need to have one. Um, it is the single most useful tool that you can have as far as marketing to your boudoir clientele. You want to put your current clients in it, your past clients, and potential future clients. Whether you've done adding that through uh, Facebook advertising, organically, links on your website, any wedding shows, or any other marketing that you're doing, try and funnel them into your private group. It is a place that one, is more of a safer community. There's less likely that the bots are going to find stuff in there. Still don't push the limits, but it allows you to have an audience that's captive to you. They're there for a specific reason because they're interested in boudoir. You can then talk to them on a daily basis without ever posting an image. You can go live. You have a very targeted, focused on what they are, and it's that's how I sort of build my funnel into my business as to getting new clientele. Anything that I do is gained as moving them into my private group where interaction from my previous clients can inspire them. It's one of those ones where all of my ad campaigns, my landing pages, then funnel back into there. Anytime I announce the winner to a contest, it's only within my private Facebook group so that there's a want and a need to be within there so that you can find out all the latest information because ultimately, Business pages have sort of gone flat. You get very little traffic there. You're lucky if you maybe get 2% return on whatever your post is as far as the reach into your followers. The traction that you can get within your Facebook group is much greater. I see anywhere from 30 to 40% of the people within my group see what I post on a daily basis. The interaction that you can get within there is also key by keeping it up and keeping it current. Same thing, you don't want to post anything that's going to push the limits within there, but you already have an audience that is hungry for the content that you want to feed to them. Think outside your genre. Um, it's Maternity is sort of the natural synergy for boudoir. You can go and you can shoot amazing projects in the maternity realm and gain clientele from there, and pretty much there's nothing that you can post in the maternity genre that is going to come even close to getting you any sort of ban. Uh, to the fact that you can even go to post maternity breastfeeding images that can be very boudoir-esque and those are completely allowed within the community standards on Facebook and on Instagram. There's nothing wrong with female nudity in regards to breastfeeding or any of the postnatal stuff. So think about that. Creating dramatic images, things that are going to pop things that are going to draw people to you that may not even know from this other genre. Because like I said, there's that natural synergy that just goes along with maternity and boudoir. And I shot this in August at WPPI, and one, the algorithms on both Facebook and Instagram responded a lot better to this image than any of the boudoir stuff that I shot and posted from then. It's really funny how despite the fact that they'll never admit to it, there is bias. So think about what you have natural synergies in and draw clientele from that. And again, funnel them into your Facebook group and you can market to them from there. Cultivate your own personal brand. Anyone who knows me and follows me knows that I'm a coughaholic. This is usually in my hands anytime I'm out and about and it's become known like the hashtag living the coffee life with me. I have practically every week Sean's failed foam art that I post and I get a hundred or so responses on. It lets them into my life and creates a window into me so that they're following me and my interaction and my posts and then when I post something, I'll get better interaction on it even though it may be the safer image and I don't have to have that dramatic splash with an image that could cost me being banned. So the more that you let your clientele into your own world, the better off you're going to be because one, it's completely safe content. Two, especially for male boudoir photographers, it's extremely key to attracting female clientele that they see you're a real person and not just some guy who's looking to point a light at a girl and take sketchy pictures. The reputation that you build online is huge. So market yourself. It's the first window that they have into your business. And I'm extremely open about what I do, where I go, 
my clients they come to me and they're like, I feel like I already know you. So that's without even posting an image other than my coffee or before I'm done here, I'm going to selfie with all of you guys in the back. Um, so you're going to be on my next post. And those little things will create a following that will help in turn with whatever you want to actually market to with your business imagery. What do we have for questions from everyone? How can I answer you? What if your client is the one who chooses which thing you, you can post from them and you don't like that term? Then you don't post it. It's as simple as that. You, you have to have that open dialogue with your clientele and they have to understand that you're running a business and generally the way that I work with my model releases is that first off I get about 95% model release from all of my clients. I'm extremely lucky that the women that I work with want to have their images posted to inspire other women to do it. It's the way that I've built my brand and so they're already wanting to be advocates for it. So I have access generally to their entire session and I can pick and choose what I think is going to be the best. If I don't post an image from their session or something like that, I explain to them why. If that question ever comes up, most times it doesn't. One of the biggest keys that I have is right after their session, I'll take a picture of the back of camera of their favorite image or the favorite image that I sort of guide them to. So it's a lower res and I have them post it in my private Facebook group and talk about their experience. It's generally not going to get hit by the bots because they can't see that small. You're taking a picture of a picture. And then having that golden testimony from their over-the-top emotions right after their session is absolutely gold. If there's one thing that I say is sort of the secret sauce to my success in my group, it's that, the back of camera teaser and having them post it because everyone goes nuts for it and you pump them up and say, yeah, you want to post this and let everyone go nuts because you look amazing. How do you uh, funnel people into your group? Um, anytime that we post anything as far as promotional on our page, on my personal page, we put a link to our VIP group. Anytime we see in other groups where people are looking, say in a wedding group, oh, we're looking for a boudoir photographer, we'll respond with, um, the link to our VIP group. When we run Facebook advertising contests or giveaways or anything like that, we drive, that's where the landing page drives them to. There's, when we do wedding shows or anything like that, there's a QR code on it or some sort of link to drive them to get their offer within the group. Um, it probably will be, but I haven't had business cards in two years because of the pandemic. Um, it's just mostly been here, scan the QR code because no one wants to touch or take anything at this point. When we run a Facebook giveaway, um, the ad links to a landing page off of there. So in there, it'll be uh, collect all their information, then there's a button of to be able to find out who wins, that button brings them right to our Facebook group. What was that? Um, I vary them up almost post to post. Um, I try and at least always get one that has my, um, my location in it. Another one, if it's a black and white image, I'll try and put that in and try and make it very distinct to what the image is and not just a, here's the standard pool of hashtags. There's always my standard three, which are my business hashtags, hashtag Couture Black, hashtag Be Bold, Be Sexy, Be You, and uh, hashtag CB Bombshells. So that's in every post, but then I vary everything else. No, that should be fine. I'm like, ironically, when you start to target stuff like that, um, she said, can you use like fine art nudes um, or other hashtags like that? It's the same thing. Type it in if you're curious about it. If it comes back that it shows it's got recent images, you can use it. Uh, it's when you look and it'll either come up completely blank, that means it is completely banned right now, or if there's not a lot of imagery or the last image is like two months ago, stay away from it because that'll get you dinged really quickly. Um, do you ever hashtag the outfits? Um, like oh yeah, no, I'll... Outfits, nope. I will hashtag, I will tag, like say, Honey Burdette. I've had, um, yeah, I've had uh, the lingerie manufacturers either repost or 
um, or tag me back. I, it's one of those things that it's turned into some partnerships with certain brands uh, because they followed my work and they've liked it uh, or I've ended up shooting campaigns for them. So always, if you've got any sort of lingerie or brand or anything in there, tag them as well. Um, you want to put as many different ways into spreading your brand out there within your tagging as possible uh, because you never know who's going to see it. And if you don't tag it, they're never going to see it. I also, when I post to Facebook and Instagram, I tag all of my sponsors, like my lighting company. I tag them. I tag Canon. I tag um, lingerie, stylist, um, any of those down as much as I can that is responsible for that image. One, it's going to get more exposure because it may pop up into their feed as well. And then it's... It's, That's where I'm like, I'm if I've not really come across that, most of the women, like I said, most of the women that I shoot sign full releases. Um, and most of them are proud of the fact they all want to be Tushy Tuesday. Um, so. <laughs> It's almost, that's the badge of honor that you want where they're excited and they're proud and they're reposting what you put publicly. So that's what you want is that type of viral marketing, not the fact that it's like, oh, I pushed the limits and I have this really risque image. It's, they understand that going in. If they're all of a sudden going to use it in a campaign, then yeah, that's a discussion. But if they're just reposting it to theirs, that's what social media is, and that's actually what you hope to happen in order to sort of get some viral activity on it. Any other questions? It's, again, there's certain trigger words, and for a while, Boudoir was one of them. Right now, OnlyFans is definitely a word that the bots look for. And as he said, his website sometimes will trigger things. Facebook and Instagram not, aren't only looking at what you're posting on their platform. They dig into landing pages. They'll go to the home page on your website. So you want to look there as not pushing the limits as well. They, their spiders will go out just like the web crawlers do and they'll find the images so if yeah you've got something that is complete fine art nude and the first image on your website that could get you dinged because you're running a campaign and they usually say it's about two clicks deep so if you go from here's I clicked on the ad on Facebook it brings me to the landing page which then brings me to the website and you've got a nude on the first page of your website Facebook can deny your ad Facebook can possibly ban you uh, for that because you're driving it to adult content that goes against their community standards even though it's not on their platform. So I'm being told that my time is up, but I have one last thing for you. Here's how to find me. I'm more than happy to answer questions anytime. Reach out to me. Um, I'm going to be walking around the expo the rest of the afternoon, so definitely if you have something, Come on up to me. And then lastly, aside from the fact that I own my own boudoir brand, I'm the president of the Association of International Boudoir Photographers. Um, if you scan the QR code, you can get a free month um, joining the association where we have educational uh, platforms every month, webinars. We have advocacy for uh, boudoir in general. And just, it's an amazing community to be able to interact with fellow boudoir photographers. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the afternoon and safe travels back to wherever you guys are going. Sorry, there's so many questions. Oh, not at all. But um, would you mind sharing your, um, your contract? 